Hi, I'm going to make this motor mount for a new motor for my TIG and talk about the value of making mistakes. Welcome to another episode. In the process of upgrading my TIG, uh, my next project is to upgrade the spindle motor to this one here. This is a sewing machine motor that I believe is actually a stepper motor then that can go up to about 4500 RPM and it's 750 watts if I remember correctly so about three quarter horsepower whereas my current motor is about a quarter horsepower the other thing that I really like about this motor is that I will be able to control the spindle speed through software uh, which will be really nice now in order to mount this new motor to my tag I needed to make a new motor mount. There is a 3D file as well as the, the cam operations for this motor mount. So I downloaded them and decided to make it. And what I'm going to show you is how it went. Now one of the things I'd like to talk about is making mistakes. And you'll see that I'm making mistakes. And one of the, there are two reasons I think it's important to see the mistakes. One is to realize that these other videos you're seeing where everything goes fine is either because the machinist is very experienced or because they don't show you the footage of mistakes that they made. But becoming a better machinist is a process of learning and learning typically comes from making mistakes. So I think there is value in making mistakes and from the learnings that you get from them. So I'm going to show you all the mistakes I'm making and I'm learning a ton from this. I'm not a trained machinist. I'm a software developer by trade. So I am learning by making mistakes and one of the, the results of that is I sometimes have to buy extra cutters because I broke them. Anyway, let's head to the shop and uh, start making this motor mount. This is my first time using a fixture plate. Uh, you can see that I have a hold down kit that's in a 3D printed holder that I created. And I'm holding it down on two edges on the sacrificial piece so that uh, the hold downs will be out of the way of the toolpath. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm using uh, uh, tape, a sandwich of tape and super glue. So I first clean off the plates and then I put the tape on uh, both the sacrificial plate and then also the part I'm actually going to mill. And once I have this uh, tape on, I want to burnish it on both sides. And then once it's fully burnished, I can apply the super glue put the plate on top and then I put a, a weight uh, which is my vise on top of that. Now I'm uh, aligning this so that uh, the part that I'm cutting is uh, in a repeatable position so if I need to take it out and put it back in I can do so. Tightening the screws. Now I'm going to change to my edge finder and find the left uh, back edge. Uh, for this part I decide to use left back edge and also the bottom. So you're going to see that uh, when I switch to the drill, uh, I actually set the bottom to be the top of the tape. Uh, this is a four, me four millimeter drill running at a thousand RPM and you can see it's doing a great job. Uh, and then after this I switch to a 4.8 millimeter drill. And you, here you can see how I'm aligning it to the top of the tape, which is the bottom of the part that I'm making. Now I'm using a 3 16 end mill and using the same approach, get it close, and then I'm watching until the tape actually starts to tear. And here I'm using an adaptive to cut it. Now, one of the things that you're going to see is that uh, this is working just fine, but when I get down to the point where it starts to step over, I'm taking a much too aggressive step over for the motor I have, so it's stalled out. Now the other thing is I noticed that the air compressor wasn't blowing away chips, so at about this point I stepped outside to flip the circuit breaker. Note to self, never leave the machine running with a new op that I haven't tried before. Uh, and then uh, of course when I came back in it was too late to uh, catch what is about to happen, so take a, a careful look. You can see that the 
the motor came to a complete stop and then it sta uh, snapped. Here are the parameters that I was using. You can see that the optimal load is uh, 75 thousandths of an inch. And I've entered uh, the information into here. And what you can see is that it requires 0.1 horsepower and this amount of torque. Now I've got a quarter horsepower motor on the machine, but at 10,000 RPM, I'm guessing it uh, doesn't have the maximum torque. Um, I don't really know, I'd have to look it up. So I'm guessing that I ran into the torque limit of the motor. And what this tells me is I have to be a lot less aggressive at cutting. So the bottom of the story is the information in G-Wizard is not the whole picture. And sometimes you have to uh, work your way up to something rather than work your way down because working your way down, of course, is going to break cutters like I just did. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have comments or suggestions of changes I should make, please put them in the comment section below. Also, if you like the, uh, the video, please subscribe and you know, send me a thumbs up or thumbs down to indicate uh, what you think. For subscribing, there's a little bell icon. If you click on that after you subscribe, that will uh, make sure you get an email when I have new videos out. See you next time.